how did you go to rit and what was the path you followed okay so uh, so i graduated uh, from uw madison uh, with a degree in uh, mechanical engineering and um, i was pretty much looking for teaching jobs uh, faculty positions and uh, and what have you uh, you know very honestly i reached a point where uh, i either had to do a postdoc and go for some more research and universities i would say uh, or go for institutes that in a way focus on both teaching and research at the same time so the the load is in a way split that way um, and that's what i did so i went for the route where it's not just like a research position but it's actually uh, there's some focus on teaching at the same time. Um, I had a few interviews uh, at the main campus in, in Rochester, New York, and uh, you know the campus in Dubai started in 2008, so it was fairly uh, new. Um, and um, yeah, you know, I, I never even went to uh, Dubai. I've never been to Dubai, uh, so it was only uh, the interviews over Skype when it came to the to the other campus, but. Um, but yeah, I've been there since August 2013, and um, yeah, so far so good. And and what do you do at RIT? What, what subject do you teach? Right. So uh, you know, my, my specialty I would say is experimental mechanics. But uh, given the size of the campus uh, at RIT Dubai, I end up teaching some courses that are outside my discipline. Uh, for the most part, I teach solid mechanics courses like strength of materials, material sciences, the labs associated with the two. Um, I teach uh, dynamics, um, not in my area, but it's a fairly straightforward uh, introductory course. Um, I've been teaching recently system dynamics, uh, which is a senior class somewhere between controls and vibrations. And uh, on the graduate level so far, I've taught two courses, uh, Introduction to Composite Materials, which is a really interesting course. Um, I'm, I'm a big fan of uh, those topics. and. I think last summer I taught um, a research methods course. Uh, this course is mainly tailored towards students in the Masters of Engineering program who are thinking about transitioning to a Masters of Science or a PhD program somewhere else. So it mostly walks them through uh, how to approach, uh, let's say, or how to select uh, faculty advisors, uh, how to write proposals, uh, how to do uh, literature reviews, um, how to do uh, uh, presentations to attract funding and so on. So it's mostly dedicated to get the skills necessary to be able to, you know, become a graduate student. Okay, great. Um, I have some follow-up questions on that. So yeah. the first question is, when you, you said you teach solid mechanics, right? So um, what is the what is the um, industry application for solid mechanics. So solid mechanics is one of the fundamental subjects in all of undergraduate mechanical engineering. So, right. so if, if, if an undergraduate comes to you and asks you, what am I going to do learning this and how am I going to apply it in an industry, what, what would be your uh, way to motivate that undergrad guy? Uh, you know, especially uh, I'm going to start from the context of where I'm teaching. Uh, being in Dubai, like uh, there's a huge oil and gas industry, obviously. Um, and I would say a big part of solid mechanics, whether it's strength of materials or material sciences, those two branches, uh, they both really help future engineers in what I call material selection. So quite often, you know, you do have, uh, you know, certain design criteria, geometric criteria, but it boils down to what type of material would you be using? What type of coding will you be using? Uh, what are appropriate materials for, for example, uh, those kind of temperature and humidity conditions. Uh, what are the materials appropriate um, for, let's say it's a submerged pump, you have quite a lot of chemicals and, um, you know, you're facing corrosion issues. So what is an appropriate material? So I would say a lot of the uh, tangible work that, that uh, engineers would see in industry is has to do with material selection. Um, and sometimes even like uh, troubleshooting. So, you know, when something goes wrong, uh, you know, whether it's a small crack or it's a small leak, the reasoning behind the crack or the leak could be the, you know, the, the fact that a certain material uh, is degrading because of its environment. So the knowledge of the material sciences is really important to kind of 
pinpoint the reason behind, let's say, unscheduled maintenances or frequent failures and so on. This is kind of from an oil and gas industry. You know, I would say material science is really relevant for that uh, for that sector. Um, in the construction industry, it's you know, uh, let's say people working in uh, uh, mostly contracting, so uh, actual actual construction. Um, they do use it when it comes to load calculations. So here we're talking about not thermal thermal mechanical loads, just actual physical loads. It overlaps a little bit with civil engineering, but you know, uh, mechanical engineers still do part of that work. Um, so basic load calculation. If you have a certain crane, how do you model it like a beam-like structure? How can you approximate the wind uh, as a factor in the vibrations? All of those fall under solid mechanics. Okay, great. Uh, yeah, real, that's a real interesting way of uh, saying how solid mechanics helps and yeah. the industrial applications. So uh, I have another follow-up for the research methods which you uh, speak about. So literature review, uh, that's, that's one thing which a lot of people uh miss in their undergraduate i think at least so what is the importance of literature review why should uh, why should a student do literature reviews that's a good question um you know i think uh, from a from a from a research point of view it's it's always important to know what has been done in a certain field uh, for kind of two two uh, i would say two main reasons one of them being it could be what you're after doing. It's already been done. You know, as simple as that. And I've actually personally faced that. So it'd be working on something or, you know, kind of spending quite a, quite some time on it. And all of a sudden, I realized there's a paper back in 1985, just when I was born, that they've already done that before. So I feel like proper literature reviews really help you know what are the current trends and whatever it is that you're doing. Uh, it kind of gets you in focus so you can as you're researching about a certain topic it kind of uh, kind of channels you to where or in what direction you want to go uh, because you start seeing like papers recent papers going in a certain direction these uh, some areas where industry struggles let's say it's a computational issue that people are making so many assumptions about so a lot of work is being done in that area and so on so you know, long story short, it really helps focus the work that you're doing. So rather than having it pretty uh, spread out and unfocused, you're not sure what has been done in that area. A proper literature review really kind of makes this step uh, much easier. Mm -hmm.